Hey there, this is Handyman007 and I'm curious, how satisfied are you with your toolbox? This is my big ass toolbox and I absolutely hate it. Because while it does provide protection and a huge storage space for my tools, it does very little to help me organize them. On this top layer, the slots or pockets don't conform to the size and shape of my tools so I end up keeping most of them below. And since there are no partitions here, I end up placing the last tools I used on top of the pile, making it difficult to inventory and track everything at a single glance. Worse, I also end up storing in the same space consumables like sandpaper, attachments, tape, rope, and wires. This is my last remaining screwdriver because the rest were lost or misplaced. And behind this panel is where I keep my saws, but as you can see, not a very good spot to protect their blades. So after much thought and research, I decided to design and build a hybrid tool wall organizer and storage cabinets so I can move all of these from here to here. A place for everything and everything in its place. At a single glance and all within easy reach. Now, if you are interested in doing something similar to this, watch all the way to the end to see how this was built, discover 7 design features I will elaborate throughout this video, and find out how much everything cost. Ready? Let's do this. For this project, I collaborated with my friend Marshall to bring my vision and design features into reality. The first design feature I was going for was strength and stability. So we used 3 4th inch thick marine plywood as our raw material to form the structure and fastened the carefully measured and cut pieces together with a combination of wood glue and one and a half inch finishing nails. A lot of finishing nails. By the way, here's a pro tip Marshall reminded me of. Until you are already sure, never hammer your nails all the way into the wood so it's easy to pry them out and still make micro adjustments if needed. Once everything is squared and flush, then that's the time you drive the nails all the way through. And this is the base structure. Now it's time to assemble the integrated cabinets on top. By the way, since there's a lot of wood surface to cut and smoothen, we used a jigsaw and a power sander to make the job quicker and easier. You want to know my thoughts and full review on the Black & Decker KS701PE Variable Speed Pendulum Jigsaw? After this video, watch the video in the upper right, or if you don't see it, check out my suggested videos in the description below. It's important to keep everything straight, squared, and leveled so a lot of meticulous measuring and remeasuring were done before actually cutting the cabinet parts and putting them together. This is the wall where we will mount the entire structure on. Design feature number two is all about accessibility. Before even cutting the first piece of wood, I already measured the optimum space I can use here, keeping in mind that the bottom edge of the structure should not be too low that I need it to stoop down, nor the top edge too high that it's beyond my or my wife's reach. Neither of us should need to use a step stool just to grab items on top. As such, the dimensions of the hybrid tool wall and storage cabinets are dictated by the space I marked on this wall. Design feature number three is security. Security against theft to be specific. This is part of our perimeter wall where the other side is publicly accessible. So I designed the structure to have side panels, making it difficult for anyone to reach in through this gate and grab anything. The side panels also serve a couple of other purposes, which I will elaborate in a bit. Let's go back to Marshall and see where he's already at. Okay, what he's putting here are wooden finishing trims. Trims don't just cover the grainy layers of the plywood from its side. 
with wood glue and nails. Finishing trims also help prevent the plywood from bending and splitting over time. To flush the trim with the plywood body, Marshall uses a plane or what most Filipino carpenters call katam. And when all the wooden pieces are in place, we can now sand the entire thing with a 120 grit sandpaper. Not only will this make the surfaces smooth to the touch, it will also make painting everything so much easier. Speaking of paint, we used a gray epoxy primer which brings me to design feature number 4, weather resistant. Since this assembly is going to be mounted in an area where sun, rain, and wind pass through, I needed to withstand extreme weather for a very long time. And from my experience, epoxy primer is my best friend when it comes to protecting metal or wood. However, when dealing with epoxy primer, it's important to apply it immediately after mixing the catalyst and the base paint. Because every passing minute, its consistency becomes thicker and thicker and therefore harder to roll or brush. So what really helped us paint faster were these painter's pyramids. If you want to learn more about these pyramids and the innovative ways you can use them in painting different objects fast and easy, watch the video in the upper right, or if you don't see it, check out the links in the description below later after watching this video. Here's another pro tip. Wrap a trash bag around your paint tray before pouring in paint. This way, your tray is protected from stains. And at the end of a paint job, cleanup is also a breeze. Just invert the trash bag so the leftover paint is inside, tie a knot on top, and properly discard. Okay, so while Marshall was doing the paint job, I asked a good buddy of mine to help me sort my consumables. Because my design feature number 5 is a sustainable central storage, not just for my tools, but also for all my consumables. And as you can see, I have quite a lot. Actually, we have already made considerable progress at this point because most of these stuff used to be in plastic bags, newspaper, jars, and tin cans. So what I did was purchase a lot of these clear storage boxes. These containers are made of microwavable food grade plastic and I actually found them in the food storage section in the grocery store. I also bought myself a couple of cheap plastic trays. With all these consumables organized into these see-through containers, it's now easy to locate my small nails, drill bits, staple gun wires, tox screws, big nails, zip ties, hooks, washers, and so on. And we're not even finished sorting more consumables from my remaining old containers. After the first coat of epoxy primer dried, we mounted the entire assembly on the wall and Marshall started covering a few imperfections with wood putty or plaster. When it dries off, it's going to be hand sanded and painted over with a second and third coat of epoxy primer. While Marshall was busy with the finishing touches, I began mounting my tools on the panels. Here's the basic process. I line up the top tip of a tool beside the tip of another tool. I determine the center of gravity of the object, mark the spot with a pencil, drill a shallow pilot hole, screw in an L-hook, also known as a square cup hook, through the pilot hole, tighten with a pair of pliers, and finally hang the tool. This is where design feature number 6 comes in, an adaptive storage system. If you think about it, if I used a prefabricated pegboard, I will be restricted by equally distant peg holes which will dictate my tools placement and overall layout. But because this is a flat, solid surface, I have absolute control how I want to hang my tools and where I will insert my L-hooks, down to the last millimeter. Now, it's just a matter of mounting the rest of my tools. And for design feature number 7, an independent lighting system. By independent, I mean lights that are powered by batteries. This way, even in a power outage or in the middle of the night, I can still see everything and use both my hands to locate and get what I need to attend to an emergency repair somewhere in the house. I bought these LED push lights online for 25 pesos each. However, some of them came with weak double-sided tape, so I ended up screwing their base plates into the wood. So with all seven design features, this is how everything came together.
After tallying the price of all the materials that went into this project, my total cost was 3,895 pesos, or $79.28. Was it worth it? Watch onwards and find out. By the way, if you are finding value from this video, please leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because why not? The only way I can say this was worth the investment and effort is if it satisfies all my design features. So let's put all seven of them to the test. Design feature number one, is it strong and stable? Design feature number two, can I see everything from top to bottom and more importantly, can I reach everything with my feet on the ground? Design feature number three, is it secure from potential theft? Design feature number 4. Is it weather resistant? Can it protect my items from sunlight, wind, and especially rain? Design feature number 5. Does it provide storage for all my tools and consumables? Design feature number 6, is the storage system adaptive and intuitive? Design feature number 7, does it provide adequate lighting in the dark?